78% of people who did this survey, over 15,000 people surveyed, said that they want to hear from you. Okay. So if you haven't got a social media page, if you haven't got the ambition to email people, and again, it's so easy to do. There's a large majority, nine out of 10 guests in a skiff survey said that after they've made a booking with you, they will go and check out your social media pages. This is episode number six, nine of the Short Term Mental Success Stories podcast. Are you an investor that's looking to have your home professionally managed? Go to cohostit.com for more information. Welcome back to Short Term Mental Success Stories. I'm your host, Julian Sage. This is a show where I talk to hosts about their journeys in starting and growing their short term mental business. My goal is that you'll be able to walk away with practical information that'll help you become a better host and learn how to scale your business. Like any exceptional host, we all strive for five star reviews. So please go on over to iTunes and let us know what you enjoy as it really helps support the show. If you haven't done so already, go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation, to connect with the community. Hey, what is going on, Host Nation? I'm super excited to be back again with you this week. So as part of our ongoing theme with this show, uh, we are focused right now on ways to improve our business. During this time, we should be looking at different ways that we can improve our business, our processes, how we can start moving the lever in areas that we should be focusing on. Last week, we were talking about channel managers and what it means to diversify yourself on different channels. This week, we're actually talking about direct bookings and how to be able to increase your direct bookings. For those of you that are new, one of the terms that gets thrown around quite a lot is the OTA or online travel agency. OTAs include Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, all of these different sites where you can list your property. And this is typically done either through just directly listing on the OTA or on that particular channel, or you use a channel manager like we were discussing with James Burrow in the last episode of Rentals United. In this episode, we're talking about direct bookings, which means you're not having people book through one of these OTAs and instead they are booking on your website and you are collecting their payments and it's up to your discretion and your business process to be able to handle those types of clients. I really enjoyed talking with our guest today because it really is a nice contrast between our last episode where we were talking about diversification through the OTAs and in this episode we're talking about diversification through direct bookings. It's also very uncanny timing because Airbnb just came out with their new Airbnb off-platform policy. And if you'd like to see our review, John and I's review on the off-platform policy where we break it down in detail, you can go to our YouTube channel where we are also making now exclusive content for YouTube. So if you'd like to be able to find exclusive content that is not available on either the Short Mental Success Stories podcast or even our second podcast, Vacation Rental Machine, then definitely go to our YouTube channel. Just go to shorttermsage.com backslash YouTube and you can subscribe for that content and you can see the new video that we just came out on the new Airbnb off-platform policy. There's a big push, especially right now in Booking Direct and trying to push that lever away from primarily being dependent on a single OTA like Airbnb, more towards being able to get more direct bookings. For a lot of the new people that have been coming into the space and hearing just all of the bad talk about Airbnb and everything that is happening in the space, it can put a sour taste in people's mouths thinking that they shouldn't get into short term rentals just because one of these platforms like Airbnb is having issues with publicity or with the way that they are managing their business. But Airbnb does not make up the whole short term rental market. In this episode, we actually go into detail about a whole nother side, which is the vacation rental or cottage chalet B&Bs, these types of smaller, more mom and pop run businesses that haven't been using these platforms like Airbnb and have been solely driving traffic the majority of their time because of direct bookings. Today, I had the honor of speaking with Mark Simpson, founder of boostlead.co.uk, the one-stop shop to helping you get direct bookings through website building and education. They offer a lot of different services on their website. In this episode, Mark shares the most important aspects of increasing direct bookings and how to drive more traffic to your business. We cover a lot of different things all about helping you to be able to get more direct bookings in this episode. So if you're brand new to the booking direct concept and how you can try to implement that into your business, you're going to be able to find a lot of golden nuggets in this episode. Of course, if you like my show notes for this episode, go to shorttermsage.com backslash str69. Or if you like my show notes sent directly to your inbox every week, then go to shorttermsage.com backslash show notes. With all that being said, on to this week's conversation. 
Hey, welcome back, Coast Nation, to another episode of Short-Term Mental Success Stories. In this episode, I have the special honor of speaking with my good friend, Mark Simpson. Mark, would you please introduce yourself to the Host Nation and let them know who you are and what inspired you to get into short-term rentals? Hey, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. I'm, I've been uh, tuning in to uh, previous episodes, so I'm excited to get the chance to, to chat on here. So, yeah, my name is, is Mark Simpson, and um, well, I'm speaking to you from uh, the UK. Uh, England in particular, uh, right here in Scarborough. It's a, it's a tiny town, coastal town um, in, in the northeast of, of England. And I'm speaking to you from the Granary Farm, so which is my family family business. It's a sixth generation farm, 200 acres. And um, I grow, grew up here. So I'm 30, 36, um, grown up here, did a bit of traveling, came over to America, moved back up here to uh, to the farm in 2012 with my wife and my um my my boy Alfie was it was two at the time he's now seven, and uh, we helped my parents get online. So my background I did soccer coaching, but I also while I was traveling fell into a, a sales and marketing role. So in 2012 we moved back here, and the the experience that I learned in those sales and marketing roles, um, where I got to know about social media like Facebook and uh, Twitter and uh, you know Instagram was getting popular at the time and and all of that I just put into practice here. And we're a we're a farm in the middle of nowhere. We had no right to get popular, but um, we use social media. We use the power of you know social networks and email marketing lists. And obviously, we we utilized the OTAs as well. Booking.com, Airbnb was starting to get popular, and Expedia at the time. And and uh, it it grew. It really grew. We, we, we won awards. We got top three on TripAdvisor in our local area. Um, we were one of the most followed uh, social media uh, businesses. Our page, our Facebook page, was one of the most followed in, in the local area. And in um, in 2016, I was saying to you just before we jumped on air, in 2016, my my buddy introduced me to a guy called Tim Ferriss, and I was hooked. I read read the book, the four hour work week, listened to his podcasts, and um, I realized I worked out systems and structures. And because of that. I was able to sack myself from this business. <laughs> and um, because I had all this free time, I started to go to more tourism meetings in Scarborough, in my local area. So Scarborough and Whitby, very tourist heavy, loads of B&Bs, loads of rentals, short term rentals, owners. And I used to just go to like local meetups. And it was during this time that I was asking people, how were you getting bookings? And everybody was sort of over-relying on third parties. And, and I've always been a massive fan of getting our own bookings. I could realize how to do it. And that's what started this. 2016 to, to where we are today, I um, we still got the business. It's a um, 14-bedroom guest house. It's got three holiday cottages just to the, to the right of me. And um, what I do now is pay about maybe one or two hours a week here. And then um, for the rest of the week, I'm helping hospitality owners all over the world, whether that's a guest house, a hotel, a glamp site, uh, one rental unit or multiple rental properties. I just show them how to utilize social media, how to utilize email marketing to an, a good website to get their own direct bookings where they're not having to rely on on third parties. So yeah, it's been a, been a hell of a ride. And um, yeah, really stoked to be able to talk to you. You know, Mark, Mark, um... You know, reason why I really wanted to get you on is is one. Um, you know, I, I like talking with you, but two, it's like you you're you're obviously you're in this game and you've been in it for a while. This this conversation or this topic of social media, it's so unrepresented in in the short term rental space and the hospitality space um, because this is such a, a fledgling uh, type of business. When when you first got started, I mean, 2016, talking about Book Direct when you know short term rentals B B and Bs have been have been around for a while, but I mean. Um, you know, the, how, how were people primarily getting these types of bookings back then? Was it uh, mostly through the OTAs or did people really even really think about trying to drive traffic? Because most people, when they have a business, they have to try to, you know, drive traffic to their business. And that's where you got that experience was from. But in the, you know, hospitality and the B&B space, how have people been doing that? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing to say is that we're in an industry in the world of hospitality. Uh, but we're, we're very fortunate. I mean, I, I don't know any other business that you can start up that you can just list your services on that website and pretty much get get business in straight away, which is what you do with hospitality. You know, you can look at maybe e-commerce and Amazon, but it's still it's not as simple as that. We're in a 
we're, we're in an industry where it's, you know, the demand is massive. Even now, even in where the world is upside down, the demand is there for hospitality because people love going on holiday. People love having a break, whether it's a, a two day weekend break or whether it's a two week vacation. People love um, having something to, to look forward to. So uh, as, as terms of like being, I'm not a basher of the OTAs, but I'm all about making the OTAs work for you and not the other way around. Now, everybody will know watching this, everybody that's a host, when you get a booking come in via a third party, then you've got a commission to pay. And depending on who you're listing with, the higher the, the commission is. I'm not so much bothered about the commission. It's the part of where we lose control. So data is one of the most powerful uh, and most um uh, influential commodities that there are it's why it's why booking.com don't share with you the full guest email address it's why you cannot communicate with a guest on the airbnb and be apt to try and get them off booking because they want their data they want that data because then they can remarket to them for years and years and years to come so what i come from a, a primarily a bed and breakfast background and i would say that most bed and breakfast hosts are already um, aware of this. And I would say that the breakdown is about maybe a 50-50 a, a split or a 70-30 split where 50% of the bookings come direct and then 50% of the bookings come from OTAs or third parties. But what I have noticed is because it is so crazy easy to get bookings from Airbnb and from booking.com, what you notice that more and more guests, more and more hosts, sorry, just lose that control and they'll just let let it slip and let it slide. Now, ever since I would say the last 18 months is when I've really got more aware of things like Airbnb rental arbitrage or in the UK it's called service accommodation, which rent to rent, where you um, look after a property for, for landlords or X, Y, and Z. And what I've noticed in, in, in this world in particular is that they're not used to this direct booking term. And this is why I'm coming into your world more because I'm, I'm showing that, you know, in, in, in an industry with rent to rent or whatever you want to call it, where the profit margins are so small, if I can show you how to make 15% extra, then it's going to make a hell of a difference to the end of your month uh, pay balance. So um, what I do in, in simple terms with my Facebook group, which is the hospitality community, with my business, which is Boostly and, and my podcast, the Boostly podcast, which, you, which you've been on. I just show simple little actions that you can be doing. And again, because I think people just think, oh, it's so much hard work. Booking.com and Airbnb spend all this money. How am I ever going to get a direct booking? It's really simple. It's simpler than you think. And so I, all I do is I just show these simple tactics and tips on a daily basis on how you can be getting those direct bookings and just got to get in the back of a, a little bit more control, which is my whole motto is, well, let's make the OTAs work for you and not the other way around. You know. Mark, a lot of people that are getting into the space though for the first time, you know, like you said, it's super easy. This is probably the, like, for me, this was my first entrepreneurial pursuit was, you know, listing my property. I was able to cover my mortgage and I was just like, man, this, I, I, I get it. Like the light bulb clicked in my head and I was like, I can grow this and I can, you know, then he started learning about the other ways of like management, co-hosting as we call it, or rental arbitrage, master lease investing. Um, so it was like, you know, from there, just listing a property to where it's like now, you know, we have a management business and we're growing and, and all of these different things. It everybody starts off that same way, but you don't realize like now me, you know, having, you know, teaching people, coaching people, uh, the podcast, I've had to learn like all of this social media stuff, but it doesn't come naturally. And it, it, honestly, you know, quite honestly, it can be very challenging and intimidating for most people, especially when you're talking about, you know, someone that's just listing a property and now they're a business owner. Do you think that that's enough that the energy that people are putting into trying to drive traffic to their listings is worth it? Or is it more of a time suck? Because if we're able to build a business off of these OTAs, should we is the time and energy that you're going to try to spend in learning social media marketing or ads and all these different things? Is it really worth it in the uh, in the end? Well, um, I've always been a big fan, and I've been saying this for many, many years for the last at least for four years now since 2016. Is that you can't build your house on someone else's land, and I think that I've maybe bored people by saying that, but it, it's come to pre prevalence this year with COVID, with, with this whole shenanigans that have gone on. And the reason why you can't build your house on someone else's land, that, and, I, and again, I think this is why 
my name and my brand is starting to get more awareness in America is that America has always been um, very sweetheart towards Airbnb. You know, it's an American company started in San Francisco and, and I think loads of people have taken to it. Um, the problem is, is that I know people that have maybe a 95% um, reliance on Airbnb for their reservations. And the problem is, is when you rely on another company for your bookings, is that literally like that, you can lose it. They can cancel your account, which I've seen happen. They can um, change the rules. They can put the commission up. I mean, for, for years, they've been doing it where it's like three or two or three or 4%, and then the guest pays a service fee. There was, there was, um, they were testing, they were actively testing, scrapping the, the guest fee and just putting a flat rate of 14% commission when they were really trying to um, compete against Booking.com and Expedia. Whether that transpires to anything else, we don't know. But anyway, they can do that. They can do what they want. Now, in March of this year, when, when lockdown around the world started to happen in not just you know Asia and China, but all over the world, um, literally people in America woke up to a notification on their phone. And the notification was Airbnb pushed it out to everybody with a booking saying you can cancel for free. Doesn't matter what the po policy is, doesn't matter what the cancellation policy is, you can cancel for free. And just like that, people lost thousands. I know people that have lost tens of thousands because of this. Now, I'm not saying because we've got direct bookings that we weren't affected with cancellations. That, that is definitely not true. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But we are in control of the data. We're not in control of a third party because it's the direct booking. We could take stock of what was happening. We could reach out to every guest directly. We could call them. We weren't getting scaremongering notifications from anywhere else and we we're able to adopt a change not cancel policy we saved thousands we saved our business by being able to do this to be able to pick up the phone and have a real conversation with our guests and just say hey i know you can't travel now um we we're super honest we we're super transparent we'll just say you know um we would love to see you at some point this year. Let's move your book into October, November, whenever. Just pick a date. We'll give you the credit. We'll give you whatever. We can keep the, the money in our bank and then we will just move you to another date. And we at least gave them the option. So it wasn't a case of where a third party were just canceling it and we couldn't do anything about it, but we were in control. And you know that that's my warning to everybody. And I don't think it needs to be a warning anymore because it's happened. But my this is my warning for for months and years to come now is that if you have always been reliant on a third party like Airbnb or booking.com, like more than 70%, then do some about it. And again, it's, it's not very hard. I think everybody like you were saying, it, it is it a time? So you should be on a daily, if not weekly basis, document in your business startup, the people that document, the people that go online and talk about, Hey, so I've just, you know, signed up another property. I've just done this. And, you know, and you're documenting on Instagram stories or Facebook stories. It's a 15 second video. And if you can just get into the habit of doing it every day, then it's not a chore anymore. It's just something that you do. Do you see book direct as more of something that um, because like when you have multiple properties, like, uh, let's say, you know, a after a certain point, is it, is it, should you be come more reliant? Cause let's say like for, for, you know, a lot of the hosts that are listening to this, they have management companies and they have multiple properties, um, trying to drive traffic to every single one of their properties, you know, um, could be challenging if it's, you know, different markets, uh, different places. Do you recommend book direct for more of a smaller, like, a particular individual property or for multiple properties? Yeah, I mean, everybody can be simply doing it. And 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 for the simple matter of fact is, and we're talking about off air about a, a blog that I absolutely adore, which has helped build Boostly as well as the the granary and you know help a lot of my clients as well. It's Kevin Kelly, a thousand true fans. And um there's another book that I can recommend which is Talk Triggers. Um, and what talk triggers is, is it, it's how you can turn your guests into super fans, how you can get your guests to do the marketing for you. And I think what we what we need to start doing is particularly people in the property world, you've got to realize is that as soon as you open your your doors to have members of the public come in, you're no longer property developers or property managers. You are in the world of hospitality. 
And you can really, really take a cue from the from the big guys. You know, even look at the world of hotels with with Hilton and those double tree cookies, you know, and things like that. The little things that they do to drive and build super fans. And and again, it doesn't matter whether you've got one. I mean, if you've got one property, you're in a, a massive advantageous position and somebody's got a hundred properties because you can pretty much get to know every single one of your guests. You can know what they like, why they booked with you, why do they keep on coming back with you? And if you can build that, find out your customer avatar, go, right, so we've, we've got this down to a T. Now let's open another one. And, and this one is going to, we're going to build and do everything the same thing. And if you can match it and double it and grow it and batch it and double and grow it. And obviously, as you grow your business and you get more properties and get more units, you're going to have the very fort, fortunate position of being able to hire team members. So then you hire a team member, somebody who does the social. And again, they can start to take that from, from you and they can start to be the sole person who does that for the business. And again, can travel to the different properties, you know, um, communicate with the guests and again, turn them into super fans. Because you'll get to a point where if you've got a hundred units and say that you've got, let's just say, um, a hundred guests coming through your properties every year and you've got a hundred units and that is a lot of people. And if you can just turn 20 or 30% of them into super fans, somebody who's going to rave about you online, talk about you, share their pictures on Instagram, then this is what we're, we're talking about. It's about spreading that book direct message. And then it, the, the, there's some key things that everybody needs to do. Number one, you've got to have a good website. Don't just think that you can throw up a Wix website over a weekend or a Squarespace website. You know, all your brother's best friends, auntie's uncle, next door neighbor's uh, friend can do your website. That's not the case. Get a good website, one that is built for mobile phones, one that is linked to a good PMS, property management software. If you don't know what PMS is and you haven't got one, just go to boostly.co.uk forward slash PMS. I interviewed over 100 hosts from around the world on who they use, pros and cons of everybody. There's a full list and you can go and find one that's much suitable for your business. Get one of them. So you've got an actual place where people can go to because you would be amazed. Those of you that have got a couple of seasons under your belt, you'll be amazed at how many people go onto Google and Google your brand name. Doesn't matter if you've got one property or a hundred properties, you'd be amazed how many people will go and Google you because it's word of mouth recommendation, which is what hospitality is all about. And those people that are Googling your brand name, then they're looking to find you. The problem is, is that you're not, you haven't got a good website. You're not taking care of a Google business listing. You don't have a social media presence. So what people are naturally doing is when they can't find you, guess what pops up? your booking.com listing because booking.com are bidding on your brand name. So they end up going to there. So that means more people are relying on these guys. So this is what makes the business owner go, ah, it's not a point. They're literally 95% of my bookings are coming in. There's no point in me starting. But if you can turn 95% reliance on the OTAs into 85% in just space of six months, then imagine going from 85 to 75 in a year or 75 to 50%, then you've got a nice 50-50 balance there. So then you've got 50% of your income is coming in and a direct booking, no commission to pay. You could literally save thousands a year from just doing these small little steps now. Now, what, what about, because, you know, to not discredit the OTAs, it, they, they spend a lot of money. Uh, they spend a lot of money to be able to promote your listings for you. You know, they're basically paying to get you out there. But you were saying before, is it the control of uh, being able to, you know, collect that data? You know, a person comes into your, 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 your place, you want to be able to, you know, reach out to them again. And obviously, like the difference between like, and like, let's say the OTAs and Amazon, like Amazon, everybody's going to Amazon to be able to build their business. And that's the only real place that a lot of, you know, a lot of businesses are getting shut down because Amazon's the only place. But these OTAs, it's a little bit of a different story in that, you know, there's Airbnb, Verbo, Homeway, Booking.com, and more and more. There's like 50 plus that these PMS channel managers are able to market you on. Do you think that there really should be uh, 50% of all of that money that they're spending to promote your listing be cut so that you can focus on the book direct? Or should there always be a portion where, you know, these OTAs are promoting your listing and you're able to, you know, recapture those same people? Are you saying to take away completely from the OTAs and try to grow using organic means like Google and Facebook? 
Yeah, I mean, you're right. They do spend a hell of a lot of money. Like Booking.com and Expedia, they are part of the top 10 spenders in the world in all industries because they know the power of um, Google, Google search. You know, Expedia and Google have got a running battle at the moment because, you know, they, uh, they know how much they spend. They spend a lot of money. And they're doing it because they know where the guests to start in their journey. The booking process starts right at the very start where it, you know, most of the time starts on a Google search. So these big OTAs are doing everything in their power to spend all of the money to make sure that the user sees them first. So it, there's, a, there's tons of things that you can do. And I think, like I say, from the very start, I'm, I'm not saying you should leave um, and cut off your ties to all of these and just solely rely on third parties to bring in your bookings, but it, it's it's all about making them work for you and not the other way around. So what do I mean by that? You got to realize that these guys spend a hell of a lot of money um, on Google Ads. So what you've got to do is that you've got to make sure that you are fighting fire with fire. One of the main things that that they do is that they bid on your brand name. So when you sign up to Booking.com or any of these channels in the T's and C's that nobody reads is you are basically signing off that they can bid on your brand name in Google and Bing and, and what all these other channels. So you've got to fight fire with fire by setting up a Google ad bidding on your brand name. Like I said, you'd be massively surprised how many people are actually searching for your business on the internet. But when they do, they can't see you. Now, you would think if somebody types in my business name, so that, you know, the grainy, for example, or your property business, then you should be the one that comes up at the top of Google. But it's not because booking.com are bidding on your, on your brand name. Um, now, I will caveat that if you're going to go after, go away after listening or watching this podcast and try doing it right now, then Booking.com and Expedia are doing no advertising at the present moment in time. They are saving their war chest for uh, when, when, when lockdown starts to lower a little bit more. But any normal times, you'll be able to see that they're bidding on it. So that's the first thing. It's called bid on brand. And the beauty of a bid on brand, Google Ads, is that it is pennies on the click compared to pounds because you are bidding on a keyword that is very, 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 very niche. So it's not generic like um, hotels, in New York, very expensive. It's a very, very niche keyword, so Google doesn't charge you a lot for it. But also as well, you can be doing, you can, even if a guest books with you via an OTA, you can still convert that to a direct booking. And it's a, it's a super simple method on what you can do. And it's something that so many people don't do, but it's, it's a really easy way. And this is a, a really cool tactic that I wanna share with everybody watching, because I, I think that I've taught so many people in the UK and Europe how to do this. I really want a lot of the people in America, Canada, South America to start really listening to this. When somebody books with you, you have got the ability to dictate your check-in time. Now, what we normally do is we go a clean blanket slate everywhere. So if our check-in time is 3 p.m., we also mimic that on all of the OTAs that we book on as well. But what you've got the ability to do is that you can reward people that book directly with you with a better check-in time than what you give to the OTAs. Now, when you sign up to these OTAs, depending on what country you're in, you've got to sign a little waiver, that same T's and C's, for rate parity. Now, rate parity won't be here in five years' time, but it's here at the moment. Places in Europe don't have it, but I think England definitely has it, and I still think USA has it as well. But anyway, you're saying that the whatever rate that you give Booking.com or Airbnb will be the same on your website. You've got to have that rate parity. But they don't mention about incentives. So um, what you do, you still got to keep your checking time at the same time. I'm not saying that your cleaning staff have to go crazy and get it clean and get out sooner. But on your website, have it as the checking time as, as 3 p.m. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go on booking.com, Airbnb, or any of these VRBO, and you're going to say that your checking time is 5 p.m. Now, what that means is that anybody who books with you directly gets the 3 p.m. check-in. Anybody who books with you via booking.com or Airbnb gets the 5 p.m. check-in. Now, when a, a, a confirmation comes in, so booking.com, Airbnb, you get the booking. So Julian comes and books at my place. You will get an automated booking uh, from my PMS that gets sent to you. And you're able to customize this, 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 this booking template. So it'll go along the lines of, dear Julian, thank you so much for your, your, your booking at my property. Just to confirm, your, 
your date of arrival is the is the 1st of August. You're checking out on the 7th of August. This is the total price. Uh, really important check-in information, please read, which is going to make you read it. And the, in the first line, it says, if you have booked with us directly, i.e. via phone call, email, website, your check-in time is 3 p.m. If you have booked with us via one of our third parties, i.e. booking.com, Airbnb, your check-in time is 5 p.m. If you would like an earlier check-in, here's my direct cell number. Please call me directly and we'll see what we can do. Now, imagine if you're a guest. Imagine if you're seeing them. And if you're coming in for work or for pleasure or just for any reason, you hate to be penalized for something that you didn't realize that you could get a, a direct a better benefits for booking direct. So what happens? You get the direct sell. You're going to call them up. And we send this out all the time. And I would say six out of 10 people call us and they call up and go, Hey Mark, I just got your email. Thank you so much. Just want to say we, we wanted to, um, we we're coming into town for a wedding. We need that earlier checking time. How do we do that? So super simple. You say, Julian, no problem at all. Could you just please confirm your email address for me? So you'll give us, you're going to give me there and then my, your real email address. So I've, I've achieved 50% of what I wanted to do. And you're going to, yeah, absolutely. No problem. So what we'll do, we just need to confirm your credit card details. So can you just give us your card details? Fantastic. Thank you. What I need for you to do, uh, if you just cancel down that booking on booking.com, I'll flip you over to a direct booking and then you'll get that earlier check-in time. Now, I would say success rate on that over all the clients and thousands of people that I've showed is about 60, 65, 70%. It's super powerful, and it's one thing that where you don't have to do all the work as in trying to get everybody to book with you directly. You're literally making the OTAs work for you and not the other way around. And the one big rejection that I get, and I've said this to a lot of people on a lot of podcasts and a lot of webinars that I've done, the one thing is saying, well, will booking.com penalize you for that? No, absolutely not. Your algorithm does not get hit. The reason why is that it's the guest canceling their stay. It's not you as the host canceling their stay. If I, as the host, had gone on and cancelled, Airbnb, Booking.com, Verbo will cut my reach. I will drop right to the bottom of the rankings. An average cancellation from a guest on, on these on these cancellations is 35 to 40 percent. They expect it because people will go on Booking.com and they'll book four or five places at a time, and then they'll go back in and cancel, you know, three or four of them and leave one. So they expect that. And again, it's not you instigating the cancellation. It's the guest that has done it. You haven't emailed them directly and said, Julian, cancel, 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 book direct. Because don't forget, booking.com will read that email. But because the guest has called you and they've instigated the cancellation, it's absolutely fine. And again, it's, it's a super simple tip. You can set it in your templates. It goes out all the time. And it's just a case of you picking up the phone and, and getting them to switch it. And it's, it's one of the easiest ways of, of getting a direct booking from an OTA one. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that tip. And kind of going from there. So now you have this person that has uh, provided you their information. Um, you know, I, I, I know when a lot of people, especially like, you know, w when you have that, you create that that um, that mail service provider that maybe you're using MailChimp, uh, you know, which is free and pretty easy to set up. Uh, but now you have that person's information. You put them in your 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 mail mail service provider. But 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 then what? I mean, for the person that maybe doesn't know anything about like email, you know, uh, sending out emails, email campaigns, copywriting, uh, or setting up even like a payment processor, um, you know, those can all be challenging things for a person that's never done this before. What kind of what's the next step? Hey, this is Julian, and I wanted to be able to give you our newest book, Airbnb Secrets Revealed, How to Build a Fortune on Airbnb Without Owning Property. In this book, we talk about the concepts of rental arbitrage investing, as well as co-hosting, and how you can build a business leveraging other people's properties. This book is perfect for the new short-term rental investor, and it's something that I wish that I had when I first started, as it would have saved me a lot of trouble and helped me to understand how to be able to leverage the power of short-term rental investing in your own real estate portfolio. If you'd like to get our newest book completely for free, go to shorttermsage.com backslash free book. Now back to the show. Yeah, hundred percent. And now you get into my world. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy you asked me this question. Emails is, is such an amazing, amazing tool. So first and foremost, if you have a good PMS property management software provider, any good PMS will have a, a payment system already set up. They will link up with Stripe. Stripe's the easiest one to get set up with. Um, some of them even connect to PayPal. Um, so that that's that taken care of. Don't worry about the payment side. But with with emails, so as long as you get permission from 
the person that you can send them emails. Again, MailChimp do all this for you. Then they're giving you the ability to send them an email into their inbox. 99.9% .9 of people, and I'm not just saying hospitality owners, but businesses in general, they do email all wrong. Be either number one, don't do anything with it, and send out one email a year, which is on Black Friday sales, which annoys the hell out of people, and it's an instant unsubscribe. I love Black Friday weekend because it's when it's the reminder to me of all those emails, people that I subscribe to, but I never hear of, but I want to unsubscribe from. So the people that do email right are the ones that are writing, like they're writing to a long lost friend. So again, MailChimp, um, for those of you who don't know it, it's a free email provider. There's also sendfox.com, uh, another free email provider. You can load in um, hundreds and hundreds of emails into there that have given you permission. And you can send them out an email all from one go. And just to give you an idea, people worry about copy. People worry about what to write. Just to let you know, my spelling and grammar is shocking. There's a, a really cool tool called Grammarly. Um, it's, a, it's a system that checks what you're writing. It tells you what you've got wrong. Simple fix. Grammarly, uh, G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y. Um, and again, all that I write, and I write it twice a week, I have a, a, an email that goes up twice a week. So I'm sending eight emails a month. And all that I'm doing is I'm pointing people back to my social media posts from the previous week. So it kills two birds with one stone. Number one, sending out content to people in an email so they're hearing from me every single week. You know, those of them that want to keep hearing, they'll stick on my email list. Those who don't, they'll unsubscribe, but I'm being top of mind and I'll come back to explain that in a second. But on a, on a, on a second part, I'm fueling these social media algorithms. These social media algorithms is what means what people see on their, on their news feeds. So when they're on Facebook and they're scrolling, 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 if you're doing a, a good job, you'll come up on that scroll. So if you've got a lot of people coming to a post and liking and commenting on it, you're going to appear more on social media. It's just common sense. So all I do in an email is I'll go, hey, Julian, hope you're doing well. Um, just to let you know, this is what we've been doing over here over the course of the last week. If you've got multiple properties, you can just say, so this week we've had, a, we've had an amazing family staying from da-da-da-da. They really enjoyed going to the going to the da-da-da-da, you know, um, and it, it's this festival, this event, this whatever is going to be coming back in the autumn. Hopefully you can come to see it. Um, here's a recent picture that we shared on our social media that got a lot of the likes and engagement. It was really funny. Come and check it out. And again, people will click. People love to see this because you're not selling them in the email, people are going to engage with it. The problem with emails, people why people think emails is spammy, is that you can instantly go to your inbox right now and you will get a spammy email. Either it's somebody who's saying, hey, I'll get you number one on Google, or it's a, it's a banner catalog crappy thing trying to sell you X, Y, and Z. It's just people get put off of it. But the reason why email is the most powerful form of marketing is that number one, it's free. And number two, you get the ability to talk to somebody on a one-on-one -on -one basis with no distraction. There's no, um, there's no interference from anywhere else. When you're looking at a Facebook post, there's always interference coming in. So it's look at my banner, look at my ad, look at all these notifications. When you're on YouTube, for example, again, it's check out this video, check out this video. When it's email, you've just got a one-on-one -on -one communication. And if it's a good email, somebody will read it from top to bottom. And again, if you're doing it on a weekly basis, you're top of mind. Now, why is top of mind important? It's, it's why booking.com spend billions in ads. It's why Airbnb spends so much money getting your attention. It's why when you're in your car and you're driving down the highway, you see all these billboard ads and these, you hear these radio ads because um, what these companies are doing is they're always being top of mind. So when you walk into the supermarket, when you walk into the Costco and you're presented with thousands of options. I know what you like in America. I lived in America for a long time. There's options upon options upon options just for a detergent. It's because when you're doing that and you're looking at all these options, the, the one that stands out, the branding from the TV ads, the radio ads, the newspaper ads, whatever ads, that you're top of mind. And it's what you do with email and social media. But to do it on a small level basis, you just have to touch two points, email, social media. And once a week, once a month, whatever you want to do, that's that's absolutely fine. And again, so that's how you go from um, switching to this mindset of not having always to sell, just be sociable, just 
tell everybody what you're doing, keep in touch with them and drive people back to your social media and just keep that, that top of mind. And what you will find is that you will get a core group of people driving it all back to Kevin Kelly, thousand true pounds. You'll get a core group of people that will keep coming back to you time and time again. They will be your super fans. They will be the ones that when they're in a Facebook group or when they're on Facebook or Twitter and someone goes, Hey, I'm going to X. Um, where should I stay? Then instead of them going, Oh, go check out booking.com, go check out Google, go check out Hilton or whatever. They'll go, Oh, I remember I stayed at this really cool little rental. Uh, the owners are fantastic. Uh, I chatted to him on social media. Here's, here's his details. Here's their details. Give him a call. And that is how you make it work to your advantage. That is how you make your super fans out of the, the guests that will come to stay with you. And it's literally less than 30 to 60 minutes a day. And if you can't put aside 30 to 60 minutes a day to build your own business, then why you even got a business? Now, Mark, you know, let's say this person, they are sending out emails and, um, you know, they're saying, you know, they're using the templates that are in MailChimp because that's really easy. And they look nice, but they go to the, the, they go to their website and, you know, maybe, maybe it looks like it's from the the nineties, like, you know, web two, you know, web 1.0, like, you know, maybe the buttons aren't working or the pictures are like, you know, pixelated, like how, you know, creating a website can be challenging for a lot of people. Like, how do you, uh, you know, I go to Airbnb and I can trust based off of the reviews that I see, based off of what other people are leaving feedback on. That it's like I know that you know this this place is is credible. If I go to a, you know another person's website where maybe they don't, it doesn't look well, and maybe uh, there's no reviews, maybe it's kind of clunky, maybe they don't know how to like lead me to where I need to go. There's like a, a blog, all this information, and it's cluttered. How you know how can you? have somebody that can trust you enough to be able to enter their credit card information when there's all of these other things that you have to consider for building a website. Yeah, massively. And this is a problem that I see loads. Um, part, of the, part of the reason why the hospitality community has become one of the biggest Facebook groups for hospitality owners all over the world, it's got 5,000 members in it, super engaged, and we get people coming in all the time, is because right from day one, I started doing these things called marketing reviews. So what I would do is I would start to do little live videos every now and again in the group, and I would pick one member of the group at random, and I would take a look at their online marketing, so website, social media, and see what they were doing. And I would say 80% of the time, there was one big sticking factor into why they weren't getting direct bookings, and it all came back to the website. And I mentioned earlier, with a website, people either go on Wix and just throw up something called Wix, which is super easy to do, but is no way means effective at all. Or they get somebody who hasn't got a clue what they are doing. So they're stuck. And um, this is why I started doing websites. This is why in 2018, we started doing websites because I was getting fed up of number one, website designers who didn't know what they were doing. Um, or number two, people who were just throwing up a little website on Wix and just thinking that was going to work. Again, like you say, stuck from the 90s. And what I've realized is that there are website designers out there that are good at different industries. So you'll get some website designers that are good with e-commerce, some are good with PTs and gyms, but you've got to be picking somebody that's good with hospitality. And um, if there's something that I know is I know what a guest wants to book. I study, I'm a geek with these sort of things with marketing. I know what the guest is looking for. And that's why I started it up. And the main reason why we're now becoming the market leaders for website design is that number one, you can get a website for three ninety nine, three hundred ninety nine pounds. I'm not sure what that is in dollars, but I think it's under five hundred dollars. But basically, for that, it's the most cost effective website solution out there. But what that means is that you're going to get a website that actually works. So when somebody lands on your website, it will turn a looker into a booker because we've eradicated all of the barriers. So again, when you land on the on the homepage nice big image at the top, a nice big tagline, a nice big button saying, this is how you book here. You'll be amazed at how many websites you land on that don't have a direct book now button right here when people land on the site. So they're going, what the hell do I even book with this person? As you scroll down, it's got the latest reviews coming in. It's got nice imagery. It's built for mobile phones, which is, again, is super important. And again, it's always linking to the booking engine. And again, that's, that's what we've done. Uh, we've got over 300 clients now that are doing it. The reason why it works is that number one, we offer a money back guarantee. So if you don't at least 
get $500 worth of new direct bookings in on this website, I give you your money back. But number two, it's when somebody lands on your website, it has gives them all the information that they need. It's clearly structured so you can turn a looker in, into a booker. And, you, and you're right. If you fail to do that, it's clunky. It loads super slow. It's definitely not built for one of these. You know, um, it's really confusing. It's It's got nothing going for it. Then, yeah, uh, a guest will bounce. And 89% of people, once they leave your website, they've said in a recent survey, they never come back. And that is why, again, Booking.com and Airbnb dominate it because they spend millions. They've got teams upon teams upon teams that um, are there just to create the ultimate user experience on their website. So what all that we did is that we looked at what they were doing well, we nicked it, we moved it into our own little Dara booking world, and we created a website uh, template around that. So that's why it, 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 that side of the things is so important, and that's why it works super well. You know, Mark, with going forward in the future, do you think, because these OTAs even, or not the OTAs, but the, the channel managers, PMS, uh, they're also creating a lot of websites like website design where um, you can book directly. I know like one of the tools that we recommend is uh, your porter just because it's very easy to set up, uh, great for the smaller operators, and it has, you know, uh, pretty good looking websites when, when you do that. Should people not be using the channel manager PMS uh, websites when it's already kind of built into it? Or should they be having to set up a hosting provider and all of these other different things that comes along with, with building websites? Amazing question, and I'm glad you answered it. And yeah, I'm going to state it right now. These free websites that you get with your PMS are crap, rubbish, not going to work because they're free. That's the whole point. You get what you pay for in this world. If you pay nothing, you're going to get back nothing. And the reason why is that these websites are templated. They're just glorified landing pages. You might as well just stick a poster up outside and say, that's my website. Now, I'm not saying this to disparage these guys or, or anything like that because it's, it's a very good selling tactic to have where you can have a, a, free, a free website. But if you want a website to do anything in Google, you need to have, and I'm going to say a technical term here, I don't want to throw people, an open source website. And an open source website in simple terms is WordPress. You need to have a WordPress website if you want to do anything in Google. Okay, These PMS websites that are free, it's fair enough. Heavily templated, you can't do anything. You can't be uh, creative with what you want to do. You, you might as well not have one. So, um, well, you might as well just go get a booking.com website, which again is even more pointless. You need to have a WordPress website. And again, the reason why people steer away from WordPress websites is because when you first open a WordPress website up, if you don't know what you're looking at, you think that you need to have a degree in coding just to be able to use it which is why Wix and Squarespace got super popular because they tapped into this. They go, right, well, we'll just make a website providing service that you just drag and drop. But again, Wix and Squarespace, they don't do anything near what WordPress can do. Google's preferred operating system is WordPress. So if Google prefers them over everybody else, that surely should be giving you some form of indication. And again, if you're going to put some time and effort into it, you might as well go straight to the source. So again, what, what we did, and this is something that we've done since 2018, is that we've gone, right, so people don't know how to use WordPress. The world of hospitality don't know how to use WordPress. But we know that Wix, Squarespace, and you know, uh, your partner, Guesty, Ziva, whatever you want, they, they give a free website out, they don't work. So what we did is we basically created it where we, we, we make a WordPress website as simple to use, drag and drop, as Wix and Squarespace and the rest of them. And that is simply what we did. So Google loves it. You've got all the tools, but all the structure is in place. So 90% of the work's been done for you. All the structure's there. The layout's done. All you have to do for that free 99 is add in your pictures and add in the text. I mean, you, you work with a lot of people for trying to help them book direct. What, um, you know, and recently with with everything that's happening, you know, this, this is going to be coming out, you know, kind of... Um, during COVID COVID nineteen, you know, we're we're seeing a resurgence. So right now, you know, uh, we're hearing a lot more cases coming back, uh, and and definitely increasing. What what have you seen with the transition of hosts in the kind of more book direct movement? Have people been seeing a lot of success? Or you know, for someone that maybe doesn't have any experience trying to you know use social media, creating websites, uh, you know, driving traffic, all of these different things. Have, have you seen a lot of success in the space or is there um, a lot, just a lot of wasted energy? 
So um, there's a, a really cool travel company and travel podcast called The Fuel Travel. Um, they're based over in Myrtle Beach, and they um, they speak to mostly hotel and resorts. But I love their podcast because it really delves into the nitty gritty of marketing. Now, what they've been doing since the start of COVID is they've been running surveys, surveys with travelers. They've got access to over 15,000 database of, um, of guests and travelers, and they've been running these sentiment surveys every couple of weeks throughout COVID. And there's a couple of big messages, so like the TLDR version of it. There's a couple of really big messages that are coming out of all these surveys. Number one, there are two big worries of your guest, your next guest arriving in your property. Number one is safety. Number two is cancellations. So number one, when they arrive in your rental, when they arrive in your hotel, when they arrive in your hospitality business, are they safe? Number two, what happens, just like what now is happening in the States, just like what happened in Victoria State in Australia, just like what is now happening in Leicester in England. And we're recording this on the 1st of July, you know, Leicester, where UK is meant to reopen for hospitality on the 4th. Less than next week can't open because there's a spike and there's a local lockdown. So this is going to happen a lot over the next six months of 2020. What the the people are looking for is cancellation and safety. So with the cancellation, it's if I make a booking and for whatever reason I can't travel, what's going to happen? Have you got a, are you still stuck in the Stone Age and have you got a super strict cancellation or are you being flexible? Are you offering the option where they can just leave credit with you and move it to a later date? That's what they're looking for. And 78% of people who did this survey, over 15,000 people surveyed, said that they want to hear from you, okay? So if you haven't got a social media page, if you haven't got uh, the ambition to email people, if you aren't communicating, then how are you going to spread the message that number one, you are safe, and number two, your new cancellation policy? And again, it's so easy to do. Um, There's a large majority, nine out of 10 guests, uh, in, in a skiff survey, said that after they've made a booking with you, they will go and check out your social media pages. And again, if you haven't got a Facebook business page, if you haven't got an Instagram page, you don't have to be super active on it, but at least have a base profile. So when somebody Googles in your business name, they can go find out a little bit more about you because people do do this. They want to find out more. And specifically in these times, they're going to be going to Facebook. They're going to be going to Instagram to see if you've put an update out. Now, me personally speaking, I mean, it's my own personal experience. Um, I live in Spain. I don't live in England. We're stuck here because we, we arrived here on 11th of March for a conference in, in, in London, for a, a hospitality conference. We're meant to be here for six days and then fly back, me and my family, my three boys. We got stuck because on the 12th and 13th of March, Spain went into lockdown. We weren't letting people back in. We weren't letting us Brits back in. So we've been figuring out how to get back and we're going to get the ferry. But up until last week, um, Spanish people, the Spanish government had still closed off the borders. So we were rebooking our ferry tickets and they were getting canceled all the time. And we were trying to figure out what's going on. And where did I go? The call centers were down. Nobody was replying to emails. I was going to Facebook. I was going to Twitter to see if it'd been an update place. And there had, and that was my news source for this business. And again, this is what your guests, your next guests are going to be doing. So even if you just use it as a communication piece, not even for a marketing piece, just for a communication piece with your guests, then that is literally all that you need to be doing. You need to be at least putting a post up to say, hey, this is what we're doing um, now to be COVID secure. We've got contactless check-in. There's no da 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 da. You know, we, we are we are we are following the rules and regulations that our state or our town or our um, county has put in place. Number two, cancellation wise, when you book with us directly, you can cancel your booking up to X dates before arrival. Um, if you can't reach us for what for a lockdown reason, we will switch your date for free at no charge for a date in the future. Da 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 da. So, but you've got to put that confidence across, and those hosts that have done this those hosts since the middle of march that have been proactive that haven't just hidden you know started binge flick binge watching netflix and tiger king and instead of being proactive on social media i tell you what they are fully booked they are fully booked so when they reopen they are fully booked and they've got a they've got a waiting list i've done a in my um in my private coaching group we did a we, we did a, a, a weekly call tonight and one person has got 
fully booked for the, for up until October. She's actually got a waiting list and she's got thousands of dollars worth of bookings that have come in just, and she attributes to the fact that when it all went south and people were canceling and she had an empty calendar, she kept posting on social media. She kept top of mind. So there's so many success stories. You just literally have to start today. Go on Facebook, put up a post. I don't care if it's crap. Just put some up because people will want to hear from you. Awesome. You know, Mark, Mark, thank, thank you so much uh, for just all of the information. If, do you have any, any last words for anybody that, you know, is maybe they were planning on starting uh, during this, this whole time? Maybe they already have a property, uh, but with everything that's going on, like with COVID and cancellations and, um, you know, uh, the end of Airbnb, as everybody's kind of saying, um, do, do you think that people still should be starting getting into the short-term mental hospitality business now, or should they wait until the end of next year when, you know, everything is kind of blown over and we don't have to, you know, have to deal with the cancellations and, and all of these different things. What, what do you say to the people that are afraid? You know what? doesn't matter whether it's COVID or no COVID cancellations happen 33% average. So do not worry, but you are joining an industry that is, the demand is massive. Even when Nobody was allowed to travel. You could still home key workers, you know, if, as long as you had the right connections and whatnot. And I've spoken to so many people here in the UK and, and, and all over that have now built up so many good relationships with their local hospitals and their local um, hospital trusts. So where in January, they had no connections, you know, they had no NHS bookings, but now they've got a massive database. So when even though COVID will stop one day, they're still going to need the doctors, doctors to come in, nurses to travel in and out and whatnot. They've now got contacts to, and just around hospitals, they are building up their portfolio just around hospitals so they can meet the demand. There is going to be demand everywhere. There's over demand. For self-catering units, there is a increased demand. You might as well have Zoom stocks right now because there's an increased demand for self-catering units because the people that were going on cruises the people that were staying in big hotels, they are not doing that right now because of so many reasons that we don't even need to go into, but they still want to get away. It comes to the thing that I said right at the very start of this interview. We are in an industry where we are so lucky that we can make people's memories. We are what people look forward to. You know what I mean? It's people... Um, don't look forward to buying that mug on Amazon, but they look forward to their trip or their vacation, whether it's a, a weekend away, five days away, coming to see family in town, a friend in town, or coming for business or whatever, they look forward to it. So if you're thinking of doing it or you've just started and you're on the edge of maybe stopping, keep on going. Trust me, you you will not regret it. As long as, and I stress this, Make sure that you don't build your house on someone else's land. Don't just over rely on Airbnb. Don't just over rely on one. You know, get a good website. It's super simple to do. Get a PMS. It's free, you know, or a very small cost a month. Get multi channel. So that means you can sign up, channel manager to sign up to all of them and start posting on social media, little things every day. And, you know, start to build up your super fans. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much, Mark, for taking the time. And of course, uh, lots of lots of um, uh, resources that we'll be including in the show notes page, of course, below this video and uh, in the podcast. But uh, thank you, Mark, for taking the time and very looking forward to seeing how everybody is going to be shifting over. I, I can see uh, moving forward in the future. I, I believe that a lot more hosts are going to be more conscious of the book direct and trying to integrate that as part of a business. But um, again, thank you so much. And until next time, keep on hosting. Perfect, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you host benefited from the show. If you found value, please go on over to iTunes, leave us a review and let us know what you enjoy about the show. If you'd like to talk to hosts that have been featured in these episodes, as well as the community, go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation.